to see that evening sun go down. I hate to see. It makes me think about my last go round. I feel tomorrow like I feel today. I feel tomorrow. Pack my trunk, make my getaway. Well, the St. Louis one, she got a diamond ring, and she leads her man around by her apron string. But for her perfume. The snowboard pain. Well, the St. Louis one is trying to be what she ain't. Oh, yeah. I got the St. Louis blue. I'm as blue as I could be. St. Louis blue, I'm blue as I could be. Girl, I love, she got a heart like a rock in a sea. I hate to see that even sun go down. I hate to see that evening sun go down. Well, it makes me think. My last go round. Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Little Rail back in me. And welcome to Blues Live Demo tonight. Going to be talking about the blues this evening. Talking about how to arrange and what I put into the blues and the different types of blues that are played. And uh, breaking down a variety of different pieces for you just to get a look at the style. Now, if you have been studying with me uh, off and on for uh, the last year or so here, you've learned a lot of different techniques. The idea is to showcase a variety I'll be drawing from some of my favorite blues songs uh, that I like to play in a variety of different styles and from a variety of different artists. And so uh, I just would like to welcome and say hello to uh, Joe and Greg, Marcy, Sarah. I welcome everybody to the, uh, to the class tonight here. Thank you for showing up. And so the first tune was called St. Louis Blues. And uh, St. Louis Blues goes back to uh, the teens. Uh, I want to say like 1917 or somewhere around that era. And uh, so that was my opening number. You've heard me uh, play that tune, and I've used it many times uh, over the last year. Uh, I did a lot of neat things with that tune uh, that uh, you guys have been working on. Okay, so I started out with single string lead style, and I went... Okay, that's called single string lead style. And then um, I kept on. I did some when you heard me do that. 
that kind of slurring and sliding um, that's also synonymous. Johnson, uh, maybe more than any other blues guitarist, T-Bone Walker. And so whenever you see me doing a lot of that, where I'll, I'll take a bar chord and I'll slur it, or I'll slide into it, and that gives it a real bluesy sound when the tension is created by going uh, back a half a step and slurring into the intended chord. So you heard a little bit of that in there. Of course, as always, there's some triple strumming. So you saw me going. And then for the turnaround, I would employ techniques from a finger style approach where I would pinch the two middle strings. Okay, so I put a lot of different things into a song like that uh, and many other things I didn't talk about. Slapping the fretboard for rhythmic effect, okay? Uh, lots of neat stuff in there. And then just your basic strumming, adding boogie notes. I could have added an intro and an ending, a more uh, um, something a little totally different as well. Uh, and so that was a St. Louis Blues in the key of F. And uh, just a little highlight into what I might do with that song. Now we're gonna look at a tune called Carina Carino, which is another tune that I have taught over the years. Uh, we go from the key of F to the key of A, and I'm gonna do this in more of a finger style approach now. Uh, St. Louis Blues, I did a lot more strumming and a little bit of, tiny bit of finger picking elements to it for sure. Uh, but more strumming and single string lead style. Uh, this next uh, demonstration will, will lean more on finger style but you'll also see and hear some triple strumming in there as well, okay? And so here comes Karina Karina in a finger style approach, all right? Yeah. 
the good dog house. Come on back home, Corina. Yeah. So that was Corina Corina arranging more of a finger style approach. And uh, this uh, tonight's class is a live demo. And what that means is that I'm I'm playing songs and I'm talking about what techniques um, I used in order to do them, what style I used to arrange them, um, and uh, just showcase a variety of ways to play the blues. Now. Um, that was obviously a finger style approach. So um, what I really lean on is a pinching type of approach for that. Um, so uh, other than a few of the single type, then we start pinching double strings. That's where you take your thumb and your middle and you plug down on one and up on the other. And you get that kind of sweet, sweet tone. So a lot of times that'll, that pinching will lean on like a chordal effect. And that little guitar-esque turnaround. year and F there it is an F an A okay and G now you be okay kind of a cool little riff I used it when I taught Mr. Crump's blues and the jug band song as well so sometimes those little ending turns work really nice in a lot of those types of blues songs so that was Karina Karina in more of a finger style approach and now I'm gonna showcase a old time jug band blues standard played uh, with a strumming approach, a single string lead approach, um, and a claw hammer approach. And so this is a tune called Jackson Stomp, um, otherwise known as the Cow Cow Blues. And uh, I'll play it three different ways to do this now, okay? I'm gonna start out just strumming and using a little bit of the thumb, and that'll combine strum and th single string lead, and then I'm gonna go into a little bit of claw hammer style on this as well, okay? Let me just check my tuning real quick here, as I just tuned this up, and those strings don't like to stay. If everybody's doing good tonight, All right, I think we're ready. So this is called Jackson Stomp. And uh, the, there's a, a, a great blues mandolin player whose name was Charlie McCoy from the 1920s, 30s, and early 40s. And uh, him and his brother were uh, pretty, pretty famous in their day. They were stellar musicians. And they wound up on everyone's records, backing them up and playing, you know, making them sound good. They made records on their own as well. I wish I knew more about them. Um, there isn't a tremendous amount of stuff known about them. Uh, their names pop up a lot. Uh, Charlie McCoy. And I fell in love with them because I'm a mandolin player as well as a ukulele player. And, uh, and there aren't that many blues mandolin players uh, in that era. So here's Jackson Stomp, uh, originally done on the mandolin and the piano. Those were the two places where it was often played. Um, in a little while, I'll highlight how I might imitate the mandolin. 
And that's another idea is if you're not drawing from a ukulele tradition and you are, you know, trying to find a song you like to you might imitate the sound of whatever instrument predominates. And so uh, this one was originally mandolin, but I'm not going to make the uke sound like a mandolin. I'll show you how I'm going to do that in the song right after this. Okay, so here we go. So there was Jackson Stomp. That's hard work. There, I, there was a lot of energy that went into that. And um, I wound up playing a um, whole bunch of single string lead stuff, things like that. And then, um, then I, you know, did a lot of strumming right here. That kind of a sound went into it. To move back and forth between picking a lead and strumming is something that is technically very challenging for the beginning player. Um, but when you get into intermediate advanced playing, that transition between playing leads and strumming should be seamless. And, and that's when it really starts to get fun and exciting to do that. Okay. This song had a lot of syncopation. So there are places where there's like a breath and, and there's a little hesitation in there as well. Okay, then I went to playing a little bit of claw hammer. And so that's kind of cool too, to be able to throw in some other uh, things that are not traditional for the song and, uh, and just create some variety and some variation. Okay, so uh, that's uh, another little look into how I might uh, arrange an instrumental kind of thing, especially something that's got a jug band flavor. All right, now I'm going to show you how the mandolin might inspire um, my ukulele playing. So uh, here's a song from the Memphis Jug Band, 1927. And uh, the predominating instruments on this song are the mandolin and the harmonica. 
and the harmonica would be playing this melody line. Okay, so you, that's the melody to the song. And the mandolin would be doing that too. And so, except the mandolin is going to be doing tremolo. All right, so you're going to get this kind of a thing. When you add the flutter that's inherent in the mandolin playing, um, you, you really got to think about this. This is a challenge if you want to get this kind of a sound. Now a mandolin player will be using this kind of a pick. And so that makes it easy. So if you choose to use a pick, you can get that type of a tremolo -y type of sound. Um, if you watch like guys like James Hill or um, the Langley Ukulele Ensemble, you'll see that they pick up, they use a pick on the faster songs, like Flight of the Bumblebee, right? That kind of a thing. But most of the time we can do that if it's not too fast with just our finger. And so um, I probably wouldn't use a flat pick to play that type of a sound. If I wanted to tremolo on the strings um, to get that sound, I would use the corner of my thumb. So basically I'm using like the edge of my thumbnail right here. And I got to, I have got to angle my hand, see that kind of curve like that, uh, so that I can get that down up feeling that I normally would get with the finger going. But I got to create that sound of one string. So, in order to do that, you really got to play with the angle of attack. See that cur that curve like that. And then you've got to use, I also will rest my finger underneath my thumb to support it. So you'll get that kind of a look like that. Um, this is how it looks from the front. Okay. And then when you go to other string, It's one thing to do it just on the A string, but to cross all four strings and keep the tremolo going, that's something that really requires a lot of practice. You would want to take basic scales, G scale, C scale, D scale, and practice playing tremolo all the way across all three or four strings in order to get good at that kind of a thing. So um, when I put that together with the song and strumming, I'm going to add some triple fan strokes in here. Um, it's going to really come alive. Okay, so watch what happens. Stealing, stealing, pretty mama, don't you tell on me. Put your arms around me like a sucker around the sun Won't you let me love you like my easy ride of dawn Believe I love it, what a fool I've been Believe I'm sick, what a hole I'm in I'm stealing, stealing Pretty mama don't tell on me See me sometime. Believe I love what a fool I've been. Believe I'm sick. What a hole I'm in. I'm stealing, stealing. Pretty mama, tell on me. Stealing back to my same old used to be.
Stealing, stealing, pretty mama, don't you tell on me. Some other cool things that I threw in there is I threw in a triple roll. Instead of just doing a roll, uh, a roll or a triplet, So that, that's that ba da 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 ba da 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 It gives it a lot more punch when you combine the roll with the triplet. Okay? And, and then, of course, I did the tremolo on the single strings. I did the fan stroke. I did the chromatic lockdown. Okay, um, lots of nice stuff in there uh, to make that tune come alive. That's a little Jug Band 1927. Now I'm going to go back to single string lead style playing. When this is really best with the blues is when you have a bass player or another ukulele player or a guitar player or somebody that can provide some rhythm, rhythmic accompaniment. Because as a ukulele player, if you're playing single string lead style, you you don't have no bottom, there's no bass, there's no bottom. And, and you gotta have some accompaniment. Um, and I've been doing this a long time, uh, so I can get away with it. But I would always prefer that there be some accompaniment there. So let me just demonstrate this so you get a sense of it. Of course, I'll be strumming chords when I'm singing, but when I go to play leads on the intro and on the solo, there won't be any accompaniment. Okay, and uh, um, and there's some... some really cool little riffs in there, reminding myself about that. Okay, okay, so here we go. Lal Fulson is a um, part of what we call the West Coast sound. Uh, this tended to be bluesmen who um, moved west from states like Texas. So I'm going to do Reconsider Baby by Lau Folsom. And I encourage you all to go on YouTube or at least write some of these names down so you can hear the originals. Lau Folsom, Reconsider Baby. It's a blues classic. Okay. Now, if I was playing with a band, I'd plug my uke into a tube amp to try to give it a warm, sweet, you know, bluesy sound, kind of reminiscent of what the guitar is doing. Okay, so here we go. All right. Reconsider, baby. So long. You, I guess you'll never know. You said you once had love, 
Now I guess you change your mind Once and love me Now I guess you change your mind Don't you reconsider baby Try me one more time You then gather so long To separate this way We've been together so long To separate this way Why don't you reconsider baby Bring yourself back someday Reconsider, baby. All kind of cool little riffs and improvisation in there and slurs and slides and uh, ninth chords and all kind of cool stuff in there. So uh, um, hope you're enjoying this tonight. And uh, I want to welcome Rose and Errol and uh, um, the Clearies. And uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm doing a live blues demo here and uh, performing a variety of different uh, ways to do blues music on the YouTube. That's slurring type of slides, but um, actually going to take a little slide that you wear on your finger. 
Now in the fall, I'm going to be doing a master class. Uh, it's kind of like an, actually I should say an intro class um, with uh, Michael August on learning how to play slides. So if you're interested in this, that's a good time to do it. So I'm going to wear a ceramic slide now. I'm going to do a tune called Blues in the Bottle. Now, Blues in the Bottle is an old tune from the 20s. I first learned that song from a guy named uh, Jim Queskin. I know there's a lot of glare with the light. Um, but uh, a Jim Queskin's Jug Band. And uh, that's where I first heard the song. And then I later learned it from the uh, off the original record that was made in the 1920s. So here's Blues in the Bottle. Tumper in my hand, who's in the battle? Tumper in my hand, bottle is empty. Oh, it ain't worth a thing. On the Chattanooga, on the Chattanooga, see my pony ride. With a prize I might, oh, bring you some. Who's to chew tobacco, who's to chew tobacco, and a hand use a snuff. Who's to chew tobacco, and a hand use a snuff. Chicken don't do nothing. Texas, T for Texas, T for Tennessee, T for Texas, T for Tennessee. T for Thelma made a fool out of me.
Hey, all right. That's called Blues in the Bottle. And that demonstrates a little bit of slide approach on the ukulele, which is also another fun way that we can play the blues on the ukulele. And there's really no end to this, you see. And uh, so we're going to go from uh, more of a finger picking approach on uh, blues in the bottle where I was doing a lot of finger picking and uh, going to move it over into a um, uh, another little way to, to play some of this stuff here with more of kind of like a, uh, a strumming kind of style. And uh, this one's called the Barbecue Blues from 1936 by a fellow named Big Boy Teddy Edwards. Okay, so here we go. The Barbecue Blues. chicken, barbecue ham, barbecue beef, barbecue lamb. He was sick, took money from me. Now you where you stand, let me go free. Tell me good babe, would you give my barbecue to? Told you, babe, ain't gonna tell you no more. I told you, babe, ain't gonna tell you no more. I tell you, gay, no, oh, you got to go. young in my prime give my barbecue anytime but now I'm old my bones are cold don't give my barbecue I lose my soul tell me good babe would you give my barbecue to sick took money for me now you where you saying let me go free tell me good babe would you give my barbecue to who'd you give my barbecue to 1936 those were the kind of songs they were writing in the in the blues world and that was big boy teddy edwards um 
I call that strumming style because it's delivering a song mostly in a approach that's just a lot of strumming. Of course, things like that um, are spiced up by the walk chromatic walk downs. That kind of stuff are those kind of chromatic walk downs work really nice. And um, and then you had some repeating riffs. When I was young, in my prime. And when you get those kind of repeating, that's really cool. Now, speaking of riffs, a lot of blues music is based on sometimes just You know, you get that kind of stuff. Um, I was learning to play the uke with a cool little riff. I kept on strumming, and it was quite a gift. It was just these two chords. I was learning the blues, just these two chords. They're the ones you can use. And blues is really cool when it's based off of a riff or like a chordal groove. And so um, it doesn't get too complicated. Bo Diddley used that to great effect when he went. Right? I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. You're going to give your uke to me. My uke plan could last more than one day. Strum that you can never fade away. Strum that you can never fade away. But when it really starts to sound like the blues, on uh, whether you're playing uke or guitar, is when you get these hypnotic sort of uh, riffs that just keep repeating. And John Lee Hooker was a great example of that. So he would do things like this. And his toe would be tapping and his fedora hat and his uh, dark shades and his pinstripe suit. So if you can find some cool groove based song a boom 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 you can find them kind of cool little repeating riffs and that can be uh, a heck of a lot of fun um, let's see here um, so I use that idea to write a song I'll give you a little piece of it it's called the working class blues and uh, this is a a tune that I put on my, uh, uh, I think it was my Sing Song Daddy album. So I thought about a repeating riff and I wrote this. I love you, babe. Mama gonna stop your low down way. Oh, I love you, babe. Baby gonna stop your low down way. Don't be weary, child. Sugar daddy ain't gone away. There's a house to clean, mama there's lots of bills to pay, ooh, there's a house to clean, mama there's lots of bills to pay, ooh, don't go weary child, little rev ain't going away. So that's called a, re a repeating riff that just keeps 
going throughout a blues song. Someday, someday, mama gonna hang your head and cry. Ooh. Someday, someday, baby gonna hang your head and cry. Ooh. Dog a weary child, I see you in the sweet by and by. there's one thing you don't hear too much what I did was I played it in D minor because there's so many major keyed blues you don't get a lot of minor tuned blues drill is gone away drill is gone drill is gone minor keyed blues or just you know you don't you don't have a lot of them so you know if you can find them it really stands out jumps off of the um, you know jumps off the instrument really comes alive and you're doing it on a ukulele um, and as you can see uh, something like that sounds good with chunking so you can you can utilize the sound of the ukulele uh, in a manner that a lot of other instruments don't always, you know, uh, have access to, you know, in terms of like this chunking sound. talk a little bit about bending strings because um, in the blues you always get this kind of you know um, you know this idea bend the strings you know and um, we've got nylon strings and we can bend them so that's where you you take that string, you strike it, and then you push it up um, towards your chin, and it changes the pitch. 
and that gives it kind of that bluesy flavor. But on the ukulele, because of the nylon strings, you don't have that kind of sustain. you got to plug into an amplifier to even start to want to talk about this kind of a thing. Okay, so um, how might I do that in a song? Okay, well, let me demonstrate. Okay. You may holler at me all the time. You may never go my way. Mother Earth is waiting for you. Debt you got to pay. Don't care how great you are. Don't care what you were. When it all is up, you got to go. So a lot of that stuff that you heard me doing in there, when I was doing that, you see I'm taking, pushing those strings, I'm bending them. See how that string goes up, all that space in there? And then try to get a little bit of extra sustain by shaking the ukulele. So many cool little techniques that can be thrown in to just really uh, make this stuff come alive. It's just uh, what a what a lot of fun to do. And uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. And uh, I'm going to take it out one last little piece here. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to Mead Library, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I hope you enjoyed uh, the the breakdown of uh, playing a little bit of blues on the ukulele. This is the encore right here.
finish out with a little finger style piece by a guy named Dave Snaker Ray. And uh, it was guys like Corner Ray and Glover that really inspired me when I was first discovering the blues. You can't go. Dave Snaker Ray. Thank you, everybody. Hope you all had a good night. Been a pleasure being with you guys, and I uh, hope to see you again soon, okay? Now come on back. We'll see you next time.